Hello and welcome to my channel. I am sharing today my beautiful Pink Peony journal collection. And there are four beautiful journals available. Two in velvet covers and two in some floral linen covers. And I used digital images from Etsy. Uh, Sweet Vintage Prints is the name, and it the collection is called Pink Peony. The story behind this is two years ago, I got everything that I needed to make these kit or these um, journals, and purchased the digitals, tea dyed them, cut the papers and everything, and then something superseded importance in in creating them, and I just put them on the back burner, and. Then this and that happened, and I thought, I've got to make them this spring because it's peony season, and I just wanted to do something very, very pink, and this was the result. I had enough papers to make four journals. Usually what I do is I will print out a digital kit twice so that there's enough for two journals, and then if I supplement in other papers and other digitals, it be can become four or more journals. So that's my method. And these are single signature, but they're, they're very full, as you can see. They're very full. They are 17 full pages times four is 68 page sides to work with. Plus there's other uh, textures and textiles in here that add to the thickness. And then it allows me the opportunity to really embellish the page sides with lace and ruffles and just go to town on making them very full and fluffy, which I love. This one is the first of four and I have named them all girl names that start with a P. This one is Pippa and I love that name. I love that nickname. It didn't work for one of our kids, not my husband's jam at all, even though his middle name is Philip. I thought it would be a real nice tribute to his maternal grandfather, but that was a no-go. So I named my journals then, what I would have liked to have otherwise named something in my family. This one is, I don't even remember the name of the color. It's, Sheila, you'd have to help me with the name of this one. The velvet color is what I'm thinking of. It's mm, darker than bubblegum. It is just absolutely gorgeous. And I know I had another one that I used for something else. Doggone it. But this one is just spectacular. And what I did with these is I have made wrap covers. And I took some doilies or dresser scarves and just attach them with the sari ribbons and then they're fully removable and you can use your journal as you wish. So that's a little bit of the story behind this one. I created this couture shabby flower. I took a course many years ago on how to make them and I had the sticky patches and they have almost <laughs> Oh my gosh, that the glue and the adhe the adhesive in those sticky dots has really gone really gone sideways. But anyhow, it's worked. I had to steam it off to get it off the backing paper. This one is not removable, it's attached. So what I did was uh, these are very easy to make, very quick and easy. I as I've mentioned before, I do find it hard to stick anything to velvet covers with glue it just goes against my best judgment but I know that's what we do so here it is in all its glory just plain with its uh, vintage buttons on the spine that's become my favorite technique and then stitched around the outside I used pink stitching pink thread in all of the journals this time so this is a closer look at the wrap as you can see it's just a regular little dress or scarf or doily whatever and I found the oblong ones work better because you need about at least 12 or 13 inches wide this is a close-up of the flower that I created and just put a little bit of bling inside and then turned around 
they're they're pretty from the the back side as well i just put little little doilies that coordinated with the the dresser scarves on here and i did attach the sari ribbon in between the layers and then stitched it so they're not going to go anywhere this is this is good for a long time and they kind of remind me of little bonnets i just think they're just so cute looking anyhow that's what i came up with in a design for these journals on top of each uh, cover in a pot in the pocket is a tall skinny booklet that i've created and added some beautiful appliques with pearls and beads this is a larger applique that i cut up and those i got from susie some stamping some old book pages there's a lot of nods to our vermont um, trip and all the supplies that we had one of the ladies there wendy uh, put out a table full at the very end of ephemera and uh, journal uh, vintage papers and all kinds of very cool things and I I was able to snatch a few uh, pages out of uh, some notebooks and use them in these journals. This is some of the avocado dyed paper with the rose gold uh, paint splatterings on it. I've sewed the booklets and added some pretty little beads in the center and then just a little bit of detail. These can be used, of course, as a small pocket size journal on the go, if you like. So let's go outside. I've got these dangle beads. You know, I love to do dangle beads so much. And I've added, because these are super long, I, I'm really going for the, the longer look lately. I just love it. I think it looks more old worldly. And then I add a little bit of seam binding ribbon on the... Um, the dangles I just think they're so lovely and if you are the recipient of one of these journals you don't care for them you can just cut them shorter and use the beads for something else that's totally your thing inside I've got a pocket on the front and this is made from other parts of the velvet kit when you purchase a velvet bundle from Sheila you get the, the velvet piece that's large enough for your journal cover. You get some beautiful embroidered embellished trim. You get seam binding, you get the sari silk uh, ribbons all in the same color. You you get the velvet, velvet strips, uh, half inch wide and one inch wide. And then you usually get a, a little pair of bead dangles that she makes. And I try to use them all in every journal because they just are meant to go together so beautifully. So this little pocket tucks these two booklets inside. This one is just very plain. I've got some vintage lace and just stitched the image on there. I think these are from Ruby and Pearl. And just some of this handmade um, artisan paper. And then a smaller booklet that I've used some just some pink lace as the backing these are antique french appliques and they are so fragile i i really hesitated putting a little bulb pin on there because i thought if that gets yanked that's going to rip the stitching it is that frail it's just so sweet and attached a vintage button to each and some beads on the um, strings and again stitched and stamped inside just for some extra journaling space and the paper that I've used on the inside of the journal is, in this one, it's Stamperia. I stitch around everything, and I choose not to paint this little uh, space in here. I know you can do it. You can color coordinate it with your your journals, but I, I just doesn't bother me at all. I don't even notice it. And um, I use Craft X, of course, as my base. I've used it for well over 100 journals that I've made, and it is, I just can't say enough about it. It is so easy to sew with. It takes heat. It takes wet. You can ink it. It's just absolutely remarkable. I've made a lot of folder or um, journals and booklets and things with the, um, like a file folder, and I find it's just not as as easy to sew through with my machine. So... 
that's why I choose Craft X. It's just a better medium. It's lightweight, it's very soft and flexible. So it's just a great product. And let's go inside. The other, uh, the other journals I will feature in their own video, they will be much shorter because they're not going to include all this other stuff that I'm uh, nattering on about. Some vintage lace that I've tea dyed on the edges here. I just love this cascading effect. That's just my thing. I really love it. And I do usually the full page edge, sometimes just partial. But when I'm doing this type of a journal, this is the style that I like to go with. I've made these little booklets using um, some embossed folders. I've done a little oval. That is this one here. I love it, the Sizzix. It's 3D, it's dimensional. So it's just beautiful. And then I've just taken some uh, Finnebera's wax and just gently buffed it over top of the embossing here and a sweet little um, applique with pearls. And it's just a single booklet just for some extra writing space. That goes here. And I've got this beautiful pink lace on the side. A pocket, I've done some stamping. I've got, this is my, this one is done with this rose hybrid rose stamp. I love PSX stamps. This is the peony one or a ranuncula. And I forgot that I had this stamp already. So I waited a whole week for my new one to arrive. And as soon as I saw it in person, I went, hey, I think I've got that. So silly me, what a dingbat. Now I have two. And I like to always stamp off the page. I don't like to just have the full image showing. Just some little uh, envelopes and uh, journaling cards from the kit, a digital set called Pink Peonies. So, so pretty. Avocado paper. This is from Lorna Taylor's Illumination kit. Um, I do like to have some script pages in here and just some very basic journaling cards. And I've used the stamps, the peony stamps from Heartfelt Creations. These two little ones here for stamping off the edge of most of uh, the tags that I've done some stamping on. This is a tuck spot. If you would like to tuck something in here and put something small in there. Some beautiful lace on the side with some rhinestones in it. And these were the sweet pea tags that we learned how to make in Vermont. And I made these ones at home. I've shared them uh, in the groups that I belong to and on my Instagram account. I used a bluer pink than I would have normally done. I tend to go for softer blush tones, but I really love these. I think they're just beautiful. And even though that's a rose, I think it looks just like a peony. Some stamping on there, some decoupage of napkins, some uh, of Sheila's gold bling pieces, music paper. This was using all the elements that she gave us in her class kits at the retreat. So I've just stretched them a little farther by using them at, in these journals. And I've got a, a tall tag here with a tiny tag that I've cut out of, punched out of Edith Holden book page, sweet little image of a flower girl. Here's some of the velvet trim that you get included in the velvet bundles from Sheila. And then I just did some paper edge punching on the bottom and added a sweet little dangle and some fiber tassel tops. I love to add these, of course, wherever I can. Not too much, though. Not too much uh, in the way of fluff at the top. Some um, rose-colored vellum paper, vintage, book, uh, vintage music paper with some vintage lace in that beautiful rose color. Lots of room for journaling. And I've done something interesting. I love doing the lace swatch cards. And what I decided to do was use some of Sheila's beautiful embroidered trims, you know, the really wide ones that we get from her. So this is just some of the paper that I've used from this uh, digital set. 
and I printed it on cardstock weight and then used the toppers, swatch toppers from Odelsina Anne. And there you go. So this in itself can be used anywhere or um, used in these journals for extra writing space. And there's one in each journal. Some vintage Bible page, some vintage Shakespeare, a little bit of uh, collaging on the side, some beautiful lace with a vintage flower here, a uh, crocheted flower. What I do is I, when you find doilies that have you know, flowers and such crocheted around the edges. I just snip them off and then they become little appliques. Uh, laced some of the uh, seam binding that came in the kit with the velvet bundle. And some stamping. I love this color, just love it. This uh, journal collection, I made a lot of ruffles ahead of time as you would have seen on another one of my posts that I shared. And I used the method of sewing them onto paper first and then just gluing it onto your page, which prevents the lumpiness of stitches. And I just think it's really cool. I love it. I've been doing it lately. There's the peony stamp again. And I have always include a vintage postcard, at least a vintage postcard in every journal. I've got a series on Niagara Falls and I used those in these journals. Some more beautiful beautiful uh, vintage lace with the sequins in it just so very soft and floppy I love it these um, smaller tags I got from a six by six inch pad of peony paper how gorgeous and perfect I've been saving that for two years to use in here too here we've got some Emily Dickinson poetry some vintage music paper and then what I did in the center of each journal was I included this very 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 vintage to antique napkin it was our hanky it was larger so I just cut it into four I decided to use it this way rather than a strip on the page edges because I would have lost the center of the handkerchief and I didn't want to do that so I just think this is so stunning and soft and filmy I love that, you know, the veiled look. I just think it's so stunning. Here's a closer look at these dangles. Just an assortment. I love this bright pink. And of course, pearls. Pinky purple. All shades of pink in here, really, from blush to purple. Got a little tuck spot here or a belly band. And you can add what you want on there. It, this kit came with a bunch of sentiments, which I ended up not using. Some more of Susie's custom dyed lace in this rose color, and I've just threaded some seam binding through the insert holes. Avocado paper, another ruffle in this beautiful dusty rose colored silk. What I do is I buy yardage of silk and then just rip it into long ties, and I can use it for closure ties, I can use it for tag toppers, I can use it for ruffles, it's just so multi-purpose. Also, I love to use it for wrapping. I like to wrap my journals when somebody purchases them. I like to wrap them not in paper necessarily, but in either lace or a scarf or some kind of fabric, and then tie them with uh, whatever I have on hand. I just think it makes it more interesting. Some journals that I've purchased are just so beautifully wrapped. It's just, I, I take notes and I say, I got to up my game. And I think, well, I like the way I do it too. It's, it's just, we learn from each other, right? So stamping on the back of that tag. These little tag pockets came with the digital kit. This is a double pocket here. So you've got two. And then by only uh, adhering this tag on the sides, it actually becomes a triple pocket. And this one is a wee tiny booklet. The flowers are, I've got several sets of fussy cut flowers that I've just printed out on cardstock weight. And then I fussy cut them and I love to include them in my journals. Especially if it's a, a journal about florals, which this one is. Not too many vintage ladies or little vintage girls. This also is a tuck spot here. If you would like to tuck something in here, you can do that. Some collaging on the side. And we've got a beautiful textile. This was the bottom of a pillowcase. And it had just, you know, the long 
um, piece of the the flap for the envelope, uh, the the pillowcase, and it was all cross stitched by hand. It was so beautiful. I almost hated to cut it up, but I cut it into four, and it just fits so perfectly uh, on each page side here. Another tag, sweet pea tag. And I didn't back them because it, it shows that it's handmade. I'm fine with that. But you still can write on it, certainly. And these beautiful chiffon ribbons. I got this idea from my friend Sandra. She has dubbed herself the president of my fan club. And I love her to pieces. We got to meet in person, finally, in Vermont. And she is also registered for the next retreat uh, in June. And... I got a lovely gift from her and it was wrapped with this beautiful chiffon ribbon. So I had to message her and say, where did you get that ribbon? Can I ask you for the source because I love it. And these I got from Amazon. This was the one that she wrapped my gift in, but it, it, they come in three colors, each box. And there's green, there's pink, there's blush, there's blue, you name it, all kinds of them. So I just wanted to shout out to her for that tip. I really appreciate it. And I love the chiffon it's just so sheer and filmy again as well and I love the frayed edges this tag in the pocket on this side was also a project that we did in Vermont it was Georgianne's class that she taught on a lace masterboard so you do a great big giant piece of paper cardstock uh, covered with music paper or whatever um, book page you would like and then just layer up the lace we we used uh steam seam to light as our adhesive and you, you got to make sure you really um fill in all the little the little gaps and if you don't happen to fill them all what she recommends doing is putting a piece of parchment paper over, paper over top and then ironing it so that all the adhesive comes up because what i found when i got home was i stitched these of course i wanted to stitch around the edge you can't see it because i backed it onto parchment paper, but I found that it was gunking up my the needle on my sewing machine and we figured out that was why. So these are just a really sweet idea. I didn't do any further embellishments because I knew I was going to use them in here, these, these uh, four that I chose. Just some beautiful vintage lace on the side here and a gorgeous, gorgeous custom uh, dyed applique attached here. These I got from Susie. A larger or medium sized booklet from the digitals, the vellum paper. This is another ruffle, and this was vintage uh, fabric that I got. I made for each of our participants at the retreat in April. I made a little uh, lace and fabric swatch card for them for our tall skinny journals. And this was the fabric I used. Of course, I had some left over. So I made the shabby rows and then all of the ruffles for these journals out of it. I love buying remnants and pieces that you can just use for so many different projects. Goes a long way. This, of course, is the slotted um, tag die by Sizzix, Tim Holtz. And then I've just created these tall tags with the paper that I've printed out on cardstock weight. And then some beautiful images of florals. And what I might do is just do this in here for now. And a sweet little fussy cut flower some vintage lace on the side and then I've got this shorter page with the text printing on it script printing and I've made these side tags out of Edith Holden book page which I've shared before I just use some seam binding to tie a pretty bow and add vintage buttons that are on a wire shank back it with parchment paper and do the um slotted um punch the paper punch and then here I have made some embellished paper clips out of some fussy cup flowers that I've done as well and that just holds the page in place I like to leave these tags sticking over the edge just a little bit otherwise the buttons get too bulky in the pages avocado dyed paper and then these lovely tags I made for this project with some piano roll paper, some torn, just it's just collaging, a few layers, some extra digitals that I had from other sets, 
uh, typed, um, stamped the word Madame and a, a die cut there. And then of course this beautiful chiffon ribbon backed onto some cardstock. Just got a tiny envelope here. I'm not gonna take it out because those are really tricky to get in side the, the paper, but it's a small envelope. Some beautiful pink and white scalloped vintage lace. And then I made these uh, single pocket tags. They're, they're a floating tag or removable tag and a small booklet inside. And then I've added the tabs at the top so you can use them anywhere you want. That's the beauty of ephemera. You can move it around in, in our journals and reuse them anywhere. Some beautiful vintage lace here and I've attached it to the back this way. I made these tags using one of the ruffle uh, fabric that I had done. I've got some, a, a um, I think it's crocheted applique, just some lovely paper, scrapbook paper and German vintage book paper, a little vintage girls, and then the uh, ruffling on the side, just very simple, very tall, big tag. You can almost use it as a book, book board for writing on. And then I've just included a small piece of Sheila's embellished trim at the top. So this is Pippa. She was the first one that I made because of the color of velvet that just nailed what I was trying to create for this collection. So I am going to uh, stop the video now and record the others, but I will do much less talking. This just gave you an overview of all the supplies that I used and where I got them from and such. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it inspirational. And I hope you love my journals. They were so fun to make. Thanks for watching.